Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! So the referendum campaign has begun, the official campaign groups have been designated and the arguments are already raging. The Prime Minister says we'll be stronger, safer, better off in. And a vote to leave, says Mr Cameron, is fraught with risk. But it won't have escaped your attention that the EU is also facing challenges. A migration crisis, economic uncertainty, social unrest. So if we do decide to remain, what are the risks ahead of us? Ellie Price reports. <laughs> For some, the consequences of this EU referendum are crystal clear. For the rest of us, it's difficult to see the future after June the 23rd, hard to predict. Of course, the politicians claim to know our fortunes. This cannot be described as anything other than risk, uncertainty and a leap in the dark. We have clearly elevated Brexit as one of the uh, serious downside risk risks uh, on the horizon of global growth. And I firmly believe that leaving the EU would leave our country less secure. This lot vote leave, call it project fear. They say the other side is trying to scare people into thinking that leaving the EU is too risky. Instead, they say the uncertainty is staying in. What will the EU in 5, 15, 20 years look like? And to me, it would be an outdated block, something that was created in the last century something that can neither control properly goods, capital, nor people. Now, it's been foretold that migration will be one of the dominant issues of the campaign. Morning, all. David Cameron insists his negotiated emergency break on migrants in work benefits, as well as changes to child benefit, will discourage EU migration. But some experts say it will have little impact. Figures from the Migration Observatory this week suggest that continuing economic instability in the Eurozone is encouraging an increasing number of southern European migrants to head to the UK to join those from the east. Looking forward, it's very difficult to know what will happen next. It's possible that if the gap in economic performance between the UK and other countries, like, for example, Italy and Portugal and Spain, remains significant, then there could be quite a pull factor for some time. It's also possible that if there's more economic convergence, we could see the numbers start to fall. Much has also been made this week about the risks to both the British and the global economy if Britain voted to leave the EU. So what does it mean to stay? In the single market, we trade freely right across Europe and we have a say in making the rules across the continent. If we leave, we give up all of that with no idea what we'll get in return. The real economic risks are for staying in the European Union. We might find ourselves on the hook for bailouts for countries that are having difficulty staying in the euro in the future. We might find that our rebate comes under assault in the future. We might find that the amount of money overall that we have to give the European Union goes up and up and up. A few weeks ago, the governor of the Bank of England said leaving the EU was the biggest domestic risk to financial stability. But he also admitted... Membership of the European Union brings risks as well. And the principal risk, risks I should say, because there are more than one, are associated with the unfinished business of European Monetary Union. On the issue of whether our laws are made in Westminster or Brussels, for those wanting to leave the EU, a vote to remain would mean handing over yet more power. Fewer and fewer things over which we have the authority to make decisions, uh, that fewer and fewer of our decisions uh, can be upheld in British courts and other courts will challenge it. Uh, and I also know that fewer and fewer decisions will be made on European Union level, which will be in British interests. And yet one former minister told me pooling some decision-making isn't always a bad thing. Well, the truth is that if you enter into any international ag agreement, then uh, you may agree that those decisions uh, should be taken collectively. Uh, our NATO membership involves exactly the same kind of arrangement, where we allow NATO to take a decision for our collective strength. Actually, that makes us stronger. Both sides seem to agree a vote to remain isn't a vote for the status quo. 
those who want to stay in are confident, at least publicly, that the renegotiation will change for the better our relationship with the EU. Those who want out say that relationship will only get worse. Quite how persuasive those two visions are, I predict we'll find out on June the 24th. I've been